Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be going through Blast, Pam, and Blossom. So these three are very important components of bioinformatics under computation biology. So we'll be discussing about all three of them in this video. So let's get started with this. So talking about Blast, full form of Blast is basic local alignment search tool. So this is a very important function and it has a lot of things to do in bioinformatics. So BLAST, as we know, it's a basic local alignment search tool. So it is basically to find those sequences in a database that gives the highest alignment score to the query sequence. All right. Also, the class algorithm, which was given by Smith Waterman model. So it was written balancing speed and increasing sensitivity for distant sequence relationship. All right. So it is basically used for MSA. MSA stands for multiple sequence alignment. So this again, we need to remember one thing, the BLAST algorithm was written by Smith algorithm, just like the global alignment. And it was written for balancing speed and increasing sensitivity for distant sequence relationships. Also, instead of relying on global alignments, commonly seen in multiple sequence alignment programs, BLAST emphasizes uh, regions of local alignment to detect relationships among sequences which share only isolated regions of similarity. So these, this is a very important point. So basically, uh, it is a, uh, it is like it is employed, uh, it focuses on local alignment search. So it is based, uh, based on local searches and not on global searches. So basically it looks on internal regions, not as a whole sequence. So basically it says that uh, it emphasizes regions of local alignment to detect relationships among sequences which share only isolated regions of similarity. So basically, it does not focus as a whole of a sequence just as an MSA, but it uh, focuses on internal alignments and sequences and everything. All right. So there are many types of blasts, such as these. Uh, this first type is blast Z. So it's a special, uh, specially modified blast algorithm for longer sequences detect regions of local similarity between genomes. So this is a very important thing that we need to know about BLAST Z. So, uh, this is a modified, bla modified BLAST algorithm for long sequences, not for shorter ones, to detect regions of local similarity between genome. So moving on with, so we have lots of them. So this is the NCBI peptide sequence database. So the NCBI peptide is the protein sequence database. So these stand, there are a lot of them such as NR, MAN, Swiss broth, Swiss broth we know already, B10 is a new one, yeast, E. coli, PTB we have studied already, uh, CABAT and ELU. All right. So we'll study some of them. So such as NR stands for the all the non-redundant gene bank, such as CDS ones. Also translation plus PDP plus Swiss broth plus PIR plus PRF and MAN is for all new, all devised. Uh, gene bank, CDS translations, uh, plus PDP, Swiss broad, PIR, PIR, and all of the protein related databases, same as for Swiss broad. So, the last major release of Swiss broad protein sequence databases has no update, so they are uploaded into our system when they are received from EMBL. Basically, uh, yeah, yeah, this is this was the information that I forgot to tell in the video which I taught about Swiss broad. So, we see today's here, basically, Swiss broad updates itself as per the information received from EMBL. All right. Also talking about patents. So protein sequences derived from the patent divisions of gene bank. Yeast is uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Protein sequences where yeast uh, proteins are stored. Also E. coli, Strelitzia, E. coli, uh, genomic CDS translation sequences is there. And sequences derived from three dimensional uh, structure, Brookhaven protein data bank. So this is a PDV. The uh, protein data bank where all the three dimensional structure proteins are stored, sequences are stored. So, KBAT is KBAT database of sequences of uh, immunological interest for some more information. You can just, if you can see this link, uh, you can go through the link. All right. Also, uh, ALU, so translation of select ALU repeats from rep base. Uh, so, table for masking ALU repeats from query sequences so moving on with so we have some more like uh, ncbi uh, nucleotide sequences database such as uh, dbest 
EBS, mouse, ESTS, human ESTS, other ESTS and ESTS. So you can go through all of them and just yeah, give it a read. So these are not of much importance, but just for your knowledge that which of the NCBI databases are held for which of these purposes. So you can just give it a short read. So moving on with this, uh, there we have some more uh, nuclear sequence databases such as these. And we have some more some of the repeated names such as ALU, PD, but we have certain uh, repeated ones in the previous one also. So you can just give it a read for more of the information, more of the links as I pasted here. So you can just go to the links and you'll be directed to the exact point of control. So where you need to get all the information about the particular database. So moving on, so we have certain last programs such as, as you can see, this, is, this slide is a very important slide. So we'll talk about some of the programs, the query sequences it handles and the database types. So Talking about some of the programs are Blast P, Blast N, Blast TX, Blast TB, T Blast N, and T Blast X. So Blast N, the query sequences for Blast N is for amino acids, all right, and it has a data database type as a protein. So as it uh, codes for amino acids, it has a database type of protein, but it's not true for all, all right. So Blast P is for uh, amino acid, and it stands for database proteins all right so coming to the next one which is blast n so it is for nucleotides and it has database type nucleotides as well nucleotides only for blast x we have nucleotide six frame translations in the query sequence whereas it has a database type of protein all right so this was for blast x so we'll now talk about t blast n so it has a query sequence of uh, blast n uh, for blast and it we have amino acids and for amino acids database type is nucleotide six frame translation this is a bit different one so this is these are all things we need to remember by heart all of these things because these are important things that might come in your exams these are very very important blast programs that definitely come it may come in your exams all right and also we have the last one which is the t blast x so which is for query sequence uh, nucleotide 6 frame translation stands for going and has the same database as the query sequence. So it has notes the last one has no differences uh, considering the other ones. So it has the same last program and the uh, pardon, it has the same query sequence and the database type. So it has no differences considering the two types. So moving on with this, we have some more. So uh, we have last basic terms. Talk about some of the basic terms related to BLAST, R, sequence, homology. So it's a qualitative statement asserts that two genes share a common evolution in history and no deities of homology. All right. These have basically explained that two genes have a common history but have no similarity between the two. Also talking about sequence identities, it's a quantitative measurement of number of densities which are identical in both sequences being aligned. Uh, the sequence similarity used especially in protein. All right, we talk about sequence similarity in my coming videos. Also, talking about the next one, which is the DNA alphabet, such as ACTG. So these are four discrete possibilities, either a batch or a mismatch, which I have talked about in global and local environment. Also, protein alphabets, there are 20 of them. There are 20 amino acids present as per protein. So there can be 20 possibilities. Uh, residues can be similar without being identical all right so a scoring matrix so these 20 possibilities can be similar without being identical so we have a so as we talked about uh, similar similar sequence uh, sequence similarity which was evident for proteins especially for proteins and not for dna and alphabets so these can be either a match or a mismatch Whereas protein alphabets, residues can be similar without being identical. All right. So these are some of the terms and uh, facts that you may like to remember. All right. Considering the blast basic terms. So uh, talking about the scoring matrix, which is used to evaluate possible mass matches and to choose the best match between the two sequences. All right. 
So we have already done the scoring match uh, scoring matrix using the global and the local alignment. All right. So you can uh, it's used to evaluate the possible matches and to choose the best match between the two sequences. Basically, finding out the optimal alignment score through a scoring matrix. All right. So moving on with. So we have this important term which is the bit score. So informally, raw sequence alignment scores are simply a sum of matrix scores for in each individual acidic match in the sequence plus the gap entities. So these scores can be compared to each other from query to query. All right. Also, be a bit scores are normalized according to the size of the sequences matched, the searches, the search space, and the scoring system used. So they can be compared from query to query. All right. So it differs from query to query, and also it uh, also these are normalized according to the size of the sequence. Remember, sequences matched according to the size of the sequence match, the search space, and the scoring system used. All right. So so this is uh, uh, they noted as so S dash is the relationship of bit score to raw score. All right. So S dash is the relationship of bit score to raw score. So this is the bit score, and this just as simple as this is the raw score. All right. Also here K is a natural scale for search speed size. All right. This is something sort of a constant. All right. So this may differ from query to query. All right. This is not a constant part. And also K is a natural scale for search space size, and lambda a natural scale for scoring system. So lambda is a natural scale for scoring system, which remains same for all, definitely. And this whole term is divided by log two, all right? Ln two, all right? So talking about, uh, so I'll repeat it again. So it is S dash equals to lambda S minus Ln K by Ln two, all right? So this was the bit. And talking about the last term for this video, is, which is the E values, all right? So talking about E values, the number of different alignments with scores equivalent to or better than S dash and that are expected to occur in a database search by chance. The lower the E value, the more significant the score. So this is very important to understand, all right? So we'll just read this point again. So number of different alignments with scores equal to or better than s better than s is bit score all right that are expected to occur in a database search by chance so the lower the e value the more significant the score so the s value and the e value this uh, i mean this big e value and this raw score or the bit score uh, not the raw score but the bit score are inversely proportional to each other so higher or better the s dash value lower the e value or more significant the score is the better the uh, sequence is all right so lower the e value and higher the bit score better the sequence all right where so e values are denoted by e equals to k m n e to the power of minus lambda s where m and n are the lengths of the sequences being compared so there are two queries that we, that we are comparing which are denoted as m and n and k is a parameter that describes the size all right so k is the parameter which describes the size of the search space so it may differ to square to query and also lambda is a function of scoring system used here all right and simple s is the raw score that we studied previously so that's it from my video so stay tuned for more i'll be back with another video very soon so thank you for watching stay tuned for more